Good morning. Seems like it's been about a year ago that I've seen you. This is a new year, right? 2023? Sometime last year, I guess it was. But it's a joy to be with you once again. And on behalf of Vision Appalachia, thank you for your continued prayers and support for us. Uh, through 2022, we were able to finish up fairly strong, and it takes uh, individuals and it takes uh, local churches, faithful local churches like uh, Abundant Life, to make it happen. And so we just wanted to say thank you for your partnership with us, and we look forward to God working in and through all of us in 2023. How many can remember back to 1998? Anybody? few of <laughs> how many can remember back to yesterday i'm just curious <laughs> that's good well back in 1998 the hottest christmas gift for children was was a little gray box and it had two wires and then two controllers and um anybody know what it was called nintendo nintendo and uh, my kids loved it and we would have to sort of set a certain time limit because they would warp their way into worlds unknown until the wee hours of the morning. So in reality, it was more about Deb and I having time on the box ourselves, quite honestly, so that we could warp our way into the late hours in the morning. We enjoyed that, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm glad to announce to you this morning my addiction to Nintendo was short-lived, and now it's all about N64. No, just kidding. That's a, that's a new box, right? I, you don't even know what an N64 is, but I heard about it. But back uh, in that uh, time frame when, when Deb and I would play at 10 or 11 at night and, of course, the kids were tucked away wanting to be up as we were up, um, my favorite feature on Nintendo was the reset button because I could just go so far and, lo and behold, I would just wipe out or I think it was a little guy jumping around, Mario or whomever, and uh, I wouldn't get very far. And so I would say, Dad, let's just reset the game. Boom, and I'd push the reset button. It was like a brand new game. And so as we think about this year, today is what, January what? 1st, 2023. It's like a brand new restart for each of us, and today marks the beginning of a brand new year. In a sense, it's kind of like the reset button on the Nintendo. We can approach life with, a, with sort of a new beginning, a clean slate, an opportunity to figure out how we might grow and mature in this brand new year of 2023, to move in a direction of change and transformation, perhaps thinking through how we might uh, get a handle on uh, things physically. Maybe there are certain goals you might have physically and certainly goals that you might have spiritually. A lot of people have an aggressive goal, and, and I'm going to try to tap into this myself, where you would uh, take an attempt to read the Bible through in the entire year. Now, let me just encourage you, if that's a, a big thing for you to try to do, to or attempt to do, uh, think about something maybe like a paragraph a day, and a little time to pray and talk to God. Start where you need to start, but by all means, the new year gives us this new beginning to sort of set an upward trajectory in terms of making good progress, spiritually speaking, in our Christian lives. And of course, we're talking to those who know and love Christ already. So our message today is directed toward those who know and love Christ. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to take, as it was read so beautifully this morning, Philippians chapter 3, if you'd like to turn there with me. We would appreciate it, maybe on your device or whatever. And what we'd like to examine here today is what I would refer to as two essential keys or two essential requirements for making positive progress in our Christian life as we evaluate where we want to be at the end of 2023. And the key passage that really helps us with this upward trajectory is, again, uh, Philippians chapter 3 first thing he says here as we look at it together is simply this. If we're going to make a a progress, forward progress in our Christian lives in this year of 2023, we must uh, embrace this idea and have what I've referred to as an essential attitude. Let's look at it as Paul shares it with us so beautifully here in chapter 3. This is what he says, picking it up in verse 12. He says, not that I've obtained it, nor have I already become perfect. Now, what's, what's Paul doing here? He is uh, 
sort of doing some attitudinal things. He, he's taking a little time out here to sort of figure out where he is in terms of his spiritual progress, perhaps the year or months before. And certainly we need to do the same, sort of a personal inventory uh, of where you might be, where he was, where we are, is absolutely essential uh, for us to make positive progress in the brand new year of 2023. Now, uh, attitude is so vitally important here, and Paul's saying you must have an essential attitude if you're going to make this forward progress. Now, uh, chapter 1 has a lot to say about, um, about attitude. For example, look at chapter 1, verse 6 for just a second. Paul had a wonderful attitude, and uh, as we look here, Paul reveals the, the attitude of what I refer to as unswerving confidence in the work of God that God would be doing in his life, not only at that very moment, but throughout the entirety of his life. Notice what he says there. He says, I am confident of this very thing. The one who's begun a good work in me will perfect it, will perform it until the day Jesus Christ returns. And so we see this unswerving confidence in the adequacy of the ongoing work of God in the life of the Apostle Paul. He was absolutely convinced that what God had begun on that day there on the road to Damascus, he would continue until the day Paul would draw his last fleeting breath. Same is true with you. If, if you're a child of God, he's begun a good work in you. And sometimes we feel like that work is three steps forward, two steps back. But nonetheless, he is still doing a work. And he has promised, as we see it so clearly stated here in the sacred scriptures, he has promised to continue that work until the day the, the Lord himself returns or the day when you draw your final breath. That's good news, isn't it? It's about him working in us and us cooperating with that inward work. Uh, chapter 2, verse 13 talks about, for it is him who both wills and to do of his good pleasure within our bodies. And so we need to step up and cooperate with that inward work. Now, also in terms of this whole idea of attitude in chapter 1, where is Paul as we think about him writing this epistle? It's called one of the prison epistles, which would help us understand that when he wrote this, he wrote this while in prison in Rome. And uh, he had the folks from Philippi, a church that he established on one of his missionary journeys to send a love gift and some support and encouragement through the hands of a band by the name of Epaphrodites. And probably they were thinking, you know, Paul's really up against it. He's not doing so well. He's in prison. And Paul was in stocks and bonds, and certainly he was not a partner in some brokerage firm. He was in prison, and as we see here, the atmosphere would have been damp, dark, um, certainly deplorable in every way. And he says, even though I look at my circumstances, friends, I'm here in Philippi, but you need to understand what's happening to me is advancing the gospel. There's a, a pioneer uh, advancement of the gospel uh, among people that you thought would perhaps be unreachable. Those people are being reached, people that are in the Praetorian Guard and others, and, and they're encouraged by how God is sustaining me and how he's working in my life. So his attitude, that is the attitude of the Apostle Paul, was not looking at was what, what was happening to him, but rather what was happening through him. That's really key when we think about this whole matter of having an essential attitude. Now again in chapter 2, for example, Paul has a lot to say about attitude. The importance of realignment of our attitude. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And it's a perpetual thing. It's not something that you just sort of latch on to on Monday and it's going to carry you through Friday. Constantly renew your mind, having the mind of Christ, he says. And, and what is the mind of Christ? Help us, Paul, understand what it means to have the mind of Christ. He goes on in verses 3 and 4. In verse 5, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But in verses 3 and 4, he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each of you esteem or regard others, now get this, others as more important than himself. Don't merely look out for your own interest, but look out also for the interest of others. That's the essence of the mind of Christ. And so here in chapter 3, he talks about attitude as well. And he's saying, listen, 
if we're going to have progress in this brand new year of 2023, and I think most of us want to experience some measure of growth and grace, right? I mean, I see your hands if you're in for that. I think it's a good thing to certainly uh, uh, pray for and hope for and, and, and incline our hearts toward. I think that's very important. Uh, Swindoll, Chuck Swindoll, is that a familiar name to most of you? You ever heard it? He's a great radio preacher. You probably listen to him on Word or whatever. Uh, he's written a lot on the whole idea of attitude. And I want you to hear his words concerning this whole idea of attitude. He said these words. I believe the single most significant decision a person can make on a day-to-day basis is my choice of attitude. It is more important than what people think about me or say about me. It's more important than my circumstances, my position, or my possessions. He goes on to say these words. Attitude is the single thing that keeps me going or cripples my progress. It alone fuels my fires or it assaults my hopes. When attitudes are right, there is no barrier too high, no valley too deep, no dream too extreme, no challenge too great. Attitude. If you and I are going to make good progress in 2023, we must have an essential attitude. Now, what makes up an essential attitude? Number one, personal inventory of where you are. Now, if you own a business and you are perhaps into retail or sales, typically, I don't know that they do it so much now with all the advancement of, of computers and programs, et cetera, et cetera, but there's a time of year, years ago, where you'd see uh, stores would have signs up around the 30th or the 29th of uh, December closed for inventory. You remember those days? I assume they still do that uh, to some measure, somehow, some way. What you have to do, I think, as a business person, you've got to see where you are to project to where you want to go. And, and uh, I think Paul is helping us understand he took out time in his life. He says, you know, I'm not where I need to be. God laid hold of me for a very specific purpose, but I'm not there yet. In other words, he's taking time out to, in essence, do a personal inventory to see exactly where he was, a spiritual inventory on his life, his walk, his attitude, his ministry. And he says, I'm not where I want to be, not even close to where I could be. Uh, I have not walked exactly as Jesus has walked. And so he does this time of inventory. Now, in our inventory as believers, and as we reflect back over uh, 2022, All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? That happens. Maybe we have blown it in a certain area of life. Maybe it's our our thought life that we've not done so well with. Maybe it's because we're watching too many screens or not really using uh, good discernment in terms of what we read or what we watch or what we look at. Uh, there's frequent reminders of our humanness, and, and uh, you think about the sins that we do commit, and we, we all sin and come short of the glory of God, as we already mentioned, but, but what do you do with those things? What, what, what do you do with sin? Well, uh, three things. Name it, confess it, forsake it. Let me repeat that. What do you do with our, your personal sin? Name it. Confess it, turn your back on it, forsake it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. All means all, that's all all means, right? Name it, confess it, forsake it. Now let me let you in on a really good bit of good news. God's plan for us in this Christian life is not perfection, but progress. Let me repeat that. God's plan for us in this whole matter of Christian maturity in our life and faith, what he has planned for us is not perfection, but progress. There will come a time when we will experience perfection when we see Jesus returning for his church. Uh, John, the beloved apostle, says it like this, Beloved, we are, not, we are now the children of God. It does not appear what we shall be, but 
when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Next great event on God's eschatological calendar is the return for his church. And when he returns, if we are here on the earth, alive and remaining, we're going to be changed instantaneously just like that, locked into perfection forever. Now, positionally speaking, because we are in Christ, he sees us as if we are perfect. It's a declared righteousness. We call that justification. However, there's coming a day, perhaps not in the too distant future, when Christ returns and we will be perfected forever. I'm looking forward to that. How about you? This old earth suit kind of drags me down from time to time. I'd like to have a new body. I've got pieces in my body. I don't know. Uh, they, I've got a knee and some screws in this left leg. I assume if people, you know, when I'm raptured, they find them sort of laying in a pile somewhere. They just put them on eBay and sell them. I'm not sure. Anybody else have any spare parts? I'm just curious. Yeah, some of us do. Personal inventory with, you, with where you are. Sort of a sanctified dissatisfaction, if you will. Again, stores close at the end of the year to see where they are. It's a good thing. Perhaps even today, if you can get some quiet time somewhere, someplace, freed from noise and distraction and say, Lord, you know, help me understand where I've been and help me project to where you want me to go. An essential attitude. Well, another piece of that attitude is this. Not only must you sort of have a personal inventory of, of, of where you are, but secondly, personal implementation, impl, impl, imply, uh, um, application, I'll change this because I can't get the other word out, implementation of what to do. Two things he says, two attitudinal things to embrace. Here it is, this is very essential. If you don't get anything else today, get this. First of all, he says, let go of the past. Let go of the past. What's in the past? Our accomplishments, perhaps, our attainments, but our failures and our defeats and our shortcomings and our feelings of guilt and shame. What do we do with those things? Name it, confess it, forsake it. If we confess, he's faithful and just. It might be clinging to the past of a, a success that's impeding somebody's progress. It could be. I can't really talk a whole lot about the Steelers. I guess there's still a slight little chance. Is that true? Somebody has to lose, and this person has to lose, and they have to lose, and they have to lose, and then maybe we're in. But the Kansas City Chiefs are doing pretty good. They're at the top of their division, and you know they won the Super Bowl back in 2020. I used to live in Kansas City for 10 years, so that's my second favorite team. But if the guys on the team, along with their coach, were to sit in the facilities there at Arrowhead and constantly watch uh, videotape of, of 2020 day in and day out, day in and day out, without any consideration of who their next opponent is or who else they'll face in the next two to three weeks, then, you know, being all caught up in the past will not serve them well in the present they got four weeks to go. It's been a difficult year for many people in 2022. Some of you have been hurt. There's been pain. There's been disappointment. There's been broken dreams. Things that perhaps others don't know anything about. Let me just encourage you. Hear me. Let go of the past. It happens. We live in a broken, fallen world. And we just need to let go of the past and move forward. I read something Today, I'm not sure if I can locate it here among my stuff. I've got some stuff here. Uh, I might come back to it a little later if I do find it. Bear with me for just a second. Here it is, Winston Churchill. Listen to what he says. I just read this this morning. Winston Churchill was visiting uh, the United States in World War II, and he was heard to say these words. He says, if the past quarrels with the past, there can be no future. We must learn to accept the past as the unalterable and move on. I thought that's kind of profound. That's not in every instance, but that's a, a general rule of thumb, I would say. Let go of the past, he says. 
And yet on the other side of the same coin laid hold, lay hold of the present. Reaching out, he says in the text here, reaching out for those things that lie ahead. Someone has said these words, rightfully so. We break the power of the past by laying hold of the present. Let me repeat it. I think it's worth repeating. We break the power of the past by laying hold of the present. You see, the then can never, ever be a valid substitute for the now. We cannot allow ourselves to be so preoccupied with the past that we somehow or another lose sight of the present. Now, most of you have a car. Anybody have a car or a truck? Let me see your hands. Good. Have you ever noticed how big the windshield is? It's big, isn't it? In contrast with the rearview mirror, which is like this, right? The reason the windshield is so much bigger than your rearview mirror is because where you are headed is more important than where you've been. Where you're headed is more important than where you've been. You see, we break the power of the past by living in the present. So today, find that quiet moment, that place that's free from distraction, noise, screens, whatever, and, and get alone with God and say, God, where would you want me to be? How, how would I experience this growth and grace? How could I be on that uh, upward trajectory, spiritually speaking, in 2023? Set the agenda at that time for your own personal growth. It's time to capitalize on ministry opportunities. Say, God, how might you use me in this year of 2023? Maybe it's something you've never done before. Serving in a capacity you've never served in before. But God has equipped you to serve. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath prepared beforehand that we should indeed walk in them. So, having an essential attitude is key. Personal inventory where you are. Personal implementation of what to do. Let go of the past. Let go of the past. Let me just say it one more time. Let go of the past but lay hold of the present. Now, the second key for making forward progress is, is the simple fact that you're to have what I would refer to as an engaging approach, an engaging approach. Notice with me how Paul says, I'm reaching forward to that which lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's a fellow in Morocco, and I can't pronounce his name, so I'll not try. But he holds the world record in the mile. Three minutes and 43 seconds. Anybody familiar with the name Jim Ryan? You know that name? He's an American. He was the first human being to ever break the four-minute mile. I've met Jim Ryan in Lawrence, Kansas. He's a fine Christian man, an upstanding leader in his local church there in Lawrence, Kansas. What we see here is the simple fact that he's saying, listen, if we're really going to make forward progress, we've got to have some measure of, of, uh, of an engaging approach to our Christian life. And uh, the phrase here really suggests a, a, an all-in kind of attitude, a straining, a, an engaging pursuit. In other words, each of us should approach the Christian life, our Christian living, with the same kind of dedication and determination and devotion of an athlete who wants to be the very first to stretch and break that tape. That's the imagery Paul uses here. He's very fond of uh, athletic metaphors. This is one of the many that the Apostle Paul uses persistent energy of the person, persistent engagement of the person. Warren Wiersbe is a, a favorite author of mine, and he has recently died, probably knew more about the Bible than any living person until his death just recently. He said these words, You don't become an athlete by listening to lectures, or watching DVDs, or reading books, or cheering at games. You become a winning athlete by getting into the game and determining to win. It's our synergistic cooperation with what God is doing on the inside of us where we stretch forward, we press toward the mark for the upward call of God. 
The word here translated uh, press forward is a, is a term described to speak of a hunter. Uh, I had a friend up in uh, Michigan, Jim Fields, about 35 years ago. He shot a nice eight-point buck and uh, a lot of swamp lands up in Michigan. And so uh, it was 30 degrees and Jim was determined to get that buck. And so the buck made his way into the swamp. I mean, you know, water was this deep. Jim stripped down to his long johns, put them to the side, and out into that swamp he went to retrieve that buck. Now, I'll tell you, that's the kind of language Paul uses. I'm pressing on. I'm going to make that my own, this goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We'll talk about that in just a moment. In the Greek games... um, Runners and other competitors, athletes, would be awarded. Um, The upward call here is an interesting, uh, again, another analogy Paul uses from the athletic arena. Um, When a person would run well and finish, and finish strong and finish first, he would be down on the playing field, and they had what was called an elevated platform called the Bema. Perhaps the pastor had talked about Pastor G years ago, the, the Bema, judgment seat of Christ. And what would happen would be, if, if somebody was a winner, they'd be called up from the playing field, and it would be that upward call where they would come up onto the platform, and there in the Isthmian Games, the Grecian Games, they would be given a, a laurel wreath, 500 coins, free meals in the marketplace for approximately a year, and then free passes to the theater for a year. The Apostle Paul, using the same analogy in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, says these words, Athletes exercise self-control in all that they do to receive a perishable wreath, but we will be rewarded with that which is imperishable when we have the receiving of the upward call of God, to hear him say to us, well done, way to run, way to be strong, way to finish strong. And Paul speaks of all kinds of different crowns, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of glory, which the Lord will give unto those who run steady, run straight, and finish strong. Two things. If we're going to do well in this brand new year of 2023, it's going to take an essential attitude. Inventory of where you are, implementation of what to do, let go of the past. Listen to me. Let go of the past. Lay hold of the present. You need an energetic approach. Approach your Christian life with the determination of an athlete who desires to be all in to the glory of God cooperating with that inward work. John MacArthur said these words this past week. He says, Enter 2023 with a renewed hope in the power of God to do in you and through you what you cannot. I repeat that. Enter 2023 with a renewed hope in the power of God to do in you and through you what you cannot. Would you bow with me as we pray? So friend, I, I just want to be a, a player coach. I'm on the playing field just as you are. And I would just challenge you in the quietness of today. Would you just spend some time with the Lord? Sort of do an inventory of 2022. And see what it is that God points out to you. Things that perhaps uh, you could give attention to. Maybe some sinful transgression you need to confess name it confess it forsake it and then say lord i I would like to be able to grow i'd like to be on a trajectory of growth in 2023 where i become just a little bit more like the lord jesus in 2023 than i did in 2022 By your grace, by your enablement, by your empowerment, Lord, make this a reality in my life. Help me to know exactly what I personally need to do to get to that place. And it might be purposing to read through the New Testament, purposing to be alone with God at the beginning of every day before you even put your hand to any other task. 
You see, we need to grow in grace. Personal inventory of where you are. Personal implementation of what to do. Let go of the past. Lay hold of the present. Lord bless these your people and we pray God that you would empower them. You would encourage them. We know, Lord, you're not giving us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and Lord, that you will enable us. We believe that you are, are uh, providing your Holy Spirit for that very purpose to get us to the place of moving upward and, and onward to the glory of God as we embrace these wonderful truths we've seen here today. We think of finishing well. We think of the Lord Jesus who hung on that cross 2,000 years ago and he finished well in that he uttered those words to die," which means it is finished, paid in full. And today we celebrate him in this moment of reflection and memory of the death he paid for us in our place. Men, would you come at this time as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table?